This is just a quick video showing that I wanted to improve the presentation of these front steering knuckles before the reassembly of my front suspension. The appearance of them at the moment is quite unacceptable for a car I'm basically rebuilding. Uh, to put them back on like this would be a damn shame. They look absolutely terrible. Um, most of the original paint is missing with the exception of the brake shields. They're actually okay once you clean them up. However, I did scratch them quite badly when I was removing the lower control arm ball joint. That is an unfortunate side effect of the way I removed them. Um, it's not the end of the world, but I really want this to look as good as possible, even though, realistically, None of this is going to be visible anyway. I just like to know that things are going to look good when I look under there next time I'm under there. Most of these bolts were already uh, reasonably loose from the disassembly of the front suspension. Just the two on the little cast iron arm needed to be done with the uh, impact gun. I'm not sure why, because I didn't actually put them in that tight, but I couldn't undo them by hand again. Now the next thing I needed to do was disconnect the uh, front hub from the stub axle. And that's a case of popping this cover, which reveals the uh, wheel bearing. Now I have a bad feeling that on one side the bearings have spun at some stage. Um, there is some evidence on the stub axle itself. I guess it's not that surprising on a car with this many kilometres. Um, I'll explain more on that later. Now, this is not the best way to remove the cap. I found the best way to actually lever the um, screwdriver on a socket or something like that, not your thumb, because that hurts like hell when you crush it. Surprisingly, this grease does not look original. It looks like someone has changed it at some stage, possibly recently when they put on those horrific uh, slotted and dimpled discs, which I will not be reusing uh, because this grease still has some colour to it. I think it's not actually that old. And I, I don't know why they reinstalled a bent uh, ground contact because that wasn't even making uh, contact with the cap at all. It was basically achieving nothing. I then scooped out as much of this disgusting grease as possible. Um, it just gets absolutely everywhere and getting rid of as much of it as possible is a good thing to do. Once that's removed you can take off the locking nut. Um, it's more of a clamping nut. It's got an allen head screw on one side and it locks itself to the shaft once you've set the preload correctly. I do have a uh, dial gauge to set that correctly, I will do that later. I don't actually have the bearings yet, they're still on the way to Australia. Um, this is the clamping nut that I was talking about. Let's just unlock that screw. And once that's unlocked, the clamping nut can easily be unscrewed. And it's just a case of unscrewing it the whole way off. Then I simply removed that strange triangular shaped washer and then the outer bearing. Now only on one side I had to use the uh, pullers here. On the other side it basically came off by hand. This is what makes me think that possibly the internal races have spun on these uh, steering knuckles at some stage. Particularly on the other side there was some evidence uh, of heat at the internal races. So yeah possibly the bearings had seized at some stage and then spun. We'll see how it fits with the new bearings. Hopefully 
the damage was done to the bearings themselves and not the shaft but I just don't have them yet to test it so hopefully that's all good On these front hubs, this is how the ABS sensor gets its signal and the ABS unit determines that the wheel is rotating. Um, you can see that there's an accumulation of brake dust or whatever in those uh, fine ribs. I will be cleaning that out. And that's the rear seal I will be changing, obviously, with the uh, bearing kits once they arrive. Once that's removed, um, I just cleaned off some more excess grease and it was time to remove those uh, brake shields. They're simply held in by three Allen head screws and that's pretty much all the disassembly required. Those that disapprove of abusive tools better look away now. I don't recommend this obviously, but I don't really give a shit because these tools aren't exactly the world's most expensive. And I'm yet to have damaged a ratchet by using it as a hammer lightly to uh, seat these Allen headed bits. You really don't want to have it not seated properly because you'll be stripping that head and you will have more than a damaged ratchet to worry about when it comes to removing them. And that's pretty much all the disassembly I will be doing today. It's time to uh, get busy and clean all of this stuff and then try my handiwork at giving it a bit of a paint job. Obviously you don't want to have these uh, stubbed axles exposed to the elements for too long. Surface rust will start, that is just bare cast iron. With no protection whatsoever it's going to rust in no time. So this is the final collection of parts that I'm off to clean in the kitchen sink of all places. This is how the brake shields came up after a bit of uh, hard work, but unfortunately they're scratched and I don't want to leave them this way. Now I could have painted all of this matte black as per the factory, but I thought this would be slightly more interesting. It's more of a dark gunmetal grey. I think this will contrast quite nicely with the uh, new black lower control arms and the uh, grey H&R uh, springs. This is just a close-up of these knuckles. Um, I did oil these up so they're not going to silently rust away overnight. Um, I will start assembly tomorrow. Now that all of this actually looks half decent, I can start assembling that front end. <laughs> 